faculty and staff, our alumni and friends, to some board members who are here, to Solberry's chair of the board, Scott Bolenbaugh, along with his wife Mary, and most especially, a warm welcome to the 47 members of the class of 2016. When I thought about you today, and I thought about this moment, I thought about Jimmy Dugan. Toward the end of the movie, A League of Our Own, Their Own, baseball manager Jimmy Dugan confronts his star catcher, Dottie Henson, who has decided to quit the team. In defense of her decision, Dottie says to Dugan, it just got too hard. And Dugan responds, it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. As you sit here today on this gentle piece of rolling Pennsylvania countryside, surrounded by this magnificent vista, nestled in a cocoon of people who love and care for you, in your final minutes as Solbury students, I would ask you to reflect for just a moment on the hard that Manager Dugan spoke about. Most of you are 18. Most of you have been making your way to this moment since beginning school at the age of five. That's 13 years, 676 weeks, 4,732 days, day after day after day, going to school. At times, your journey was best described as a slog, at other times, exhilarating, 
perhaps at other times boring or exciting or meandering, but always long. There were long bus rides, long days, long hours of homework, long hours of athletic practices or drama or music rehearsals. Some years seemed longer than others. Over these years, friendships have come and gone and come and gone. Great teachers, good teachers were part of your journey and you kept moving forward, kept showing up, kept at it. For the last chapter of your schooling, you could have selected a different school where just showing up would translate into a very good grade, but you selected Silbury School where just showing up will not hoist you over any bar of success. Here you had to work, often very hard, to achieve your success. What you have done, what you have accomplished, was hard, and it was also great. To finish something you began so long ago, to be sitting here today is a great accomplishment. It required of you tenacity, resilience, determination, grit, together with wonder and awe and inspiration and passion. All these ingredients and more were needed to see you through 13 years of hard to graduation day. On your trek to this moment, you have experienced the full rainbow, victories and defeats, joys and sorrows, accomplishments and failures. And over the course of the past 13 years, you have learned stuff and you have learned how to learn. You have come to know yourself better and now, you're about to leave us for a new adventure, a new journey, one which assuredly will offer you additional victories and joy and accomplishments, along with defeats and sorrows and failures. And at times, the journey ahead will offer you both hard and opportunities for greatness. Such is the essential rhythm of our lives. As you sit here, wistfully giving leave to your thoughts, allowing them to tap dance across a treasure trove of memories unleashed in moments like this, your focus is no doubt blurred, reminiscences of the past colliding with wonder about the future, all the while relishing well-deserved satisfaction at all that you have accomplished for today. As I look ahead and wonder with you where the road will take you, I have these hopes for you. That among the stuff you learned during your years at Solberry, in your personal traveling kit, we with you have nurtured the following. First, an appreciation for perspective. The highs are never quite as high, nor the lows so low as they seem in the moment. When faced with the immediacy of whatever, take a breath, take time to think, and take the longest view possible before acting. Cultivate a sense of humor and find laughter no matter the challenge. Live your life as an adventure to be embraced, not a burden to be borne. With perspective, you can always find a reason to laugh, to lighten the burden for just a bit while you gather yourself to do the hard that faces you. You have to face sorrows and defeats and failures, and yet you are here, drinking in the success of finishing something you began so long ago. And so you have in your kit already cultivated in yourself tenacity and resilience. Continue to nurture these two qualities. They are required traveling companions for the balance of your journey if at the end you seek to declare your journey one well made. Finally, lean into the years that lie ahead of you with courage. Without courage, our world becomes very small and absent the boldness required to fully engage our life's journey, we become very much like the small ball in an old fashioned pinball machine batted about by the many forces around us, but inconsequential to the outcome. Truth, integrity, responsibility, accountability. With courage, you can seize these as the beacons to guide you. Accept that you will fail, you will have disappointments. Fairness will not always be offered. But know that with perspective and tenacity and resilience, with a sense of humor and with courage, your journey can be an adventure, one to embrace boldly as long as you remember Jimmy Dugan's advice and embrace the reality that most of our journeys are scattered with hard stretches, but if we want to taste great success, however measured, we must face the heart squarely and keep moving forward. Would you now please welcome J.R. Maddy, our first senior speaker. Good morning, everyone. 
If someone would have told me four years ago that I'd be speaking at my graduation, I wouldn't have believed them. For most of my life, I've suffered from a severe stutter. And while I've made monumental improvements over the years, I couldn't seem to shake the emotional baggage that came with a speech impediment. When I first came to Salbury, I was painfully shy, self-conscious, and insecure. Thankfully, this is no longer the case. And I owe all of it to this community. Salbury is truly remarkable. Uh, it helps students uncover their best selves and live up to their fullest potential. Surely, the class of 2016 will not disappoint. Among us sit future doctors and diplomats, actors and social workers, business people and historians, entrepreneurs and scientists, cam ca uh, campaign managers and movie producers, just to name a few. Needless to say, we're a pretty ambitious group. Perhaps the greatest lesson Salbury has instilled in us is to follow our dreams, to shoot for the stars, and to never let anyone slow us down, no matter what. While everyone sitting to my left will be able to live out their dreams, one of our fellow classmates, who should be here with us today, was robbed of that luxury. Unfortunately, as I'm sure most of you know, Josh passed away in a tragic accident earlier this year. He may have only been with us for two and a half months, but in that short amount of time, he was able to, to befriend us all. Those of us who are lucky enough to know Josh saw how intelligent um, and ambitious he was. He was going to go on to do incredible things and help make this world a better place. What better way to honor Josh than to carry out what Salbury taught us to do, to follow our dreams and to make this world the greatest place possible, all in Josh's memory. So, to my fellow classmates, the sky's the limit. Don't ever forget that. Thank you.
please welcome senior speaker Car Carlos Lewis Miller. So, as some of you may know, I really love poetry because you'll never really need a beat, a mic, or a jam session to help you speak, think, or seek answers to hard questions. So, all of you should try poetry as well. That said, my graduation speech is a poem, and I gave it the title, Overdue. So, thank you, Gretchen, for your conceptual physics class. By the end of freshman year, I'm fairly certain we were all happy just to get a passing grade, but you gave us something better than that elusive A+. You relieved us of the shell that was our fear to ask for help. And there's a shared truth that nature abides by, and it says that birds must also give up their shell before they fly. So, thank you, Peter, for your English class. There's still nothing better than trying to decipher your sense of humor and the quips you say before handing papers back. And there's still no one better at teaching grammar with enthusiasm and engendering tears, mostly of laughter. And there's still a shared truth that children exhibit, and it says that what we learn with pleasure, we will never forget. So, thank you, Tom Wilshutes, for standing outside the theater building to greet your students practically every morning. Truth be told, the pace at which we students work is wrong. We often run our race too fast and chase too much. But please know that the smile on your face and your simple, have a great day, goes a long way for a student in a dark place. You see, it's the little things you all do that let us know you care. And this thank you is long overdue. It's for the parents who have, in every sense of the word, loved their sons and daughters for at least 17 years and it's for the faculty of the Solbury School that continues to dedicate their lives to the betterment of the generations to come. And it's for the families I see in front of me <coughs> that have come together to make a network of support. And I consider you parents, faculty, and families an expanding circle that has helped me grow, either on purpose or indirectly. You are my village, and there's a shared truth we've all heard before that says it takes a village to raise a child. Now, weather storm called life will not always reign in our favor, but favor falls in many forms, and God works in mysterious ways. So we will take these four years of courage, community, and self-confidence that you gave us and show you the true meaning of limitless. Thank you. Thank all of you. Thank you, Carlos. I would ask our soon-to-be graduates to give a hand to their parents, not quite two decades ago, with support, nurturing, cajoling, sacrifice, at times perhaps a little bribery, tough love and just plain love were required to deliver these young men and women to this moment. Please thank your parents. And would you please welcome back master singers and chorus. you 
Please welcome senior speaker, Afra Botang. Okay, I guess I'll just get started. All right. I came to Solbury as a freshman from Newark, New Jersey, a city very different from New Hope. Sometimes I found it hard to connect with Solbury's community. Sometimes I felt like Solbury was this magical place in the middle of nowhere where people were extra friendly and carefree. Sometimes I felt disconnected with these uber happy people. But when I started volunteering at Doylestown Food Pantry, I met people who I felt like I could identify with. One was a mom who had two small children. She came into the pantry on a rainy day and spoke no English. Here was this woman who reminded me of the real world I knew in Newark. Here was a woman that reminded me of myself. I felt like I could connect with her, and I felt like I had purpose by helping her. I often pray to God, I, oh, excuse me, I often pray that God uses me to help others, not knowing what that help is or how. By, but fueled by my passion to aid others, and with the help of numerous people, including Diane Downs and J.R. Maddie, I learned to create films and organize food drives and trips to pantries. I raised over a thousand pounds of food and made a documentary to raise awareness on food insecurity. There were scenes in the film where anonymous people shared testimonies on how the pantries helped them build up their lives. By giving an audience to the voiceless, I found my voice too. Solbury School is unique in the sense that it helps all students find their voice. What sets Solbury students apart from others is that we take steps to realize our dreams every day. With the help of Diane Downs and Teach a Serve, my friend Carol Wright developed a fashion and culture magazine that sheds light on young entrepreneurs just like herself. Trevor McLaughlin co-founded a skateboard company using the screen printing skills he learned in Erica's class. Victoria Markov and Noah Sadoff, two of the most active Politichat members you'll ever meet, worked on presidential campaigns. To them, politics isn't just what you say, it's what you do. This is what a community of 300 people constantly reminding you of your ability to succeed can do to a person's self-confidence. Before, I was a shy honor roll student whose mom often told her, you can do it. I stand before you here today, just like I did when I presented my film on food insecurity. I stand with the support of the many people behind me as well as in front of me. This support has done a tremendous amount for my self-confidence, and I can see that it has, done, it has had a similar effect on many of my peers. Carlos spoke about appreciating a community for what it is. I'm here to thank this community for what it's done, and f done for me and all of the students here, the class of 2016. Thank you.
The class of 2016 selected Solberry teacher Lauren Eckstein to address them. Good morning. First, I want to congratulate the class of 2016 and welcome the parents, families, and friends who have come here to share this day with you. Today, my colleagues and I celebrate you and your journey at Solberry School. I think I speak for all of us when I say that we are so proud of you. We never doubted that you could do it, and even when the epidemic known as senioritis got especially virulent this spring, we only occasionally doubted that you would do it. <laughs> and yet here you are, and you all made it together. If I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, my name is Lauren Eckstein, and I am an English teacher here. Many of you know my husband, Scott Eckstein, and I am often introduced as Scott Eckstein's wife. <laughs> of course, just for today, perhaps he will be introduced as Lauren Eckstein's husband. <laughs> I have been teaching at Solberry School for six years, and I am honored that the senior class asked me to speak today. Like many of the students sitting here, I have come to view Solberry School as my home, and this is not just because I happen to actually live on the campus of the school, but because Solberry is so special. I first set eyes on Solberry School 16 years ago when I took the train from Manhattan to visit my then boyfriend, Scott. As we walked around campus, I never could have guessed how much of my life would be tied to this magical place. Three years later, I found myself living here. Then, after writing for a daily newspaper and having two children, I was asked if I was interested in teaching. And even though back when I was an English major in college and my mother said, well, you could always teach, and I always said, no, I one day found myself staring at a room full of expectant students in the G building, feeling nervous, excited, and ultimately so grateful. Growing up, I was that odd kid who always liked school. And I feel blessed that I continue to spend a lot of my time in a classroom, which I truly believe is one of the most amazing places in the world. For many of the graduates sitting here today, I came to know you in my personal essay writing class in the fall of your senior year. The secret subtitle of this class is Write Your College Essay for School Credit. <laughs> so the class is very popular. I love teaching this class because I love encouraging my students to write their life stories. And I love that you are all brave enough and trusting enough to share your stories with me. I also appreciate getting to know you at this critical time in your lives. When you walk into my classroom, it is a unique metaphysical moment when you have one foot firmly planted at Solberry School and one foot already reaching out into your unknown futures. This always reminds me of when I spent a semester, semester in London during college and I traveled to Greenwich, England, a town that sits at longitude zero, or for my purposes where I could put one sneaker in the Eastern Hemisphere and one sneaker in the Western Hemisphere and take a picture of my own feet. <laughs> when I meet the seniors in the fall, I think of that literal line in the cement and I think of this photo. That's because the college essay is like the precipice between past and future, that exquisite moment when students have one foot in each hemisphere. As the year goes on, your weight shifts, <coughs> leaning more and more away from Solberry School and more towards the future. Today, you are teetering on the edge, about to step over the line. Standing here today, I can't help but remember my own high school graduation. That was the last time I gave a graduation speech. To be honest, I don't remember much about that day. I remember people saying congratulations and getting lots of hugs and receiving that perfunctory copy of Dr. Seuss's Oh, the Places You'll Go. <laughs> but I don't remember much about what I said in my speech, and I certainly don't remember the advice given to me by the graduation speaker. So I continue now knowing that what I'm about to say will be utterly forgettable. Allow me to continue nonetheless. Advice, after all, is a weird thing. We receive it all the time, especially when we hit major turning points in life, like graduations. Yet life's most valuable lessons can come from seemingly random moments. One simple life lesson that stays with me comes from my family. When I was younger, 
I was eating dinner with my parents and sister one night and my dad started to choke, or at least we thought he was choking. We sprang into action, three shrieking lunatics walloping my poor dad on the back, and he was fine. Yet after the excitement, as my dad went back to finishing his meal, my older sister glared at him lovingly and said, chew carefully. <laughs> Since then, whenever we were going our separate ways, where most families might say, be safe, drive carefully, or I love you, we always just said, chew carefully. <laughs> For us, the phrase came to encompass it all. It meant be smart, be safe, make good choices, and just be okay. So when I went off to college, as my parents dropped me off, my mother gave me a small picture frame. Inside the frame was not a photograph of our loving family, but a small, hand-embroidered piece of fabric that simply said, chew carefully. <laughs> I knew exactly what it meant. For me, life lessons like this have often been found at unexpected times. They weren't given at ceremonious events like this, but picked up along the way when they felt relevant, useful, and even crucial. So understanding that what I'm about to impart may not be hitting you at the right time, and that you're going to forget it anyway, I still feel compelled to share with you some advice that I picked up along the way. So I know I learned a lot in college, but there was one piece of wisdom that came to me not from a class, but from the father of one of my new friends. He came to visit his daughter at college, and I joined them for dinner. As we talked, my friend and I were reflecting on our semester, and we kept repeating a certain phrase, I should have. My friend's father listened patiently as we said, I should have done this, and I should have done that, and then he looked at us, and simply said, girls, don't shoot on yourself. <laughs> it was good advice. And I think what he meant was don't live a life full of regret. Don't dwell on all the might haves or could haves. Instead, turn your attention toward what you can and will do next. These words continue to remind me to spend more energy looking forward than looking back. They also remind me that I don't want to be an I should have kind of person. Neither do you. Instead, aim to recognize opportunities and take actions. Make choices by design and not by default. When you are present, thoughtful, and intentional, you are a better version of yourself. So as you sit here today, if you find yourself looking back on the past four years with some regret, don't should on yourself. Yet as you look towards your future, focus on what you will do next, so you can aim for less I should have and more I'm glad I did. I learned another life lesson when I went to graduate school for journalism. In the first semester, I had a truly terrifying professor, yet she taught us to be reporters, to be dogged and determined in getting information and answers, to seek the truth and never give up. I remember the day she told us her motto, no means hello. I wrote those three words down in my spiral notebook, and from this I learned that along the way there will always be a no. Setbacks, problems, and failures are part of the journey. You must believe that challenges are there to inspire you to be good enough to overcome them. You must remember to approach each one like you did when you were a kid and made obstacle courses. In those days, summiting the pillow mountain and making the impossible leap to the ottoman was just an exciting adventure that existed only to be conquered. Life's obstacles can be the same way. Any mountain can be summited. Any problem can be solved. Every no is just your invitation to accept a challenge. So if you have ever looked at successful people and thought of them as those people who are supremely gifted in ways that you are not, you are wrong. Those people are just the ones who pushed through all the no's until they got to yes. It takes resilience, determination, and courage. But you have all those things. You are those people. Remember that no means hello, and there is nothing you can't surmount. One last piece of advice came to me when I was a young mother. I called a friend one day when I was feeling tired of the endless one-woman show that I performed daily for the audience known as my children. My friend told me that she had devised a magical game called Make Your Own Fun. 
here's how you play. <laughs> you look at your kids and you tell them, make your own fun. I had to challenge my kids to figure out on their own how to fill their time. Now, while I admit that this game didn't work so well on my own children, I have come to realize that there is so much wisdom in it. Think about it. All we have is time. How you spend to use that time shapes and defines who you are. Make Your Own Fun is about understanding that if your life is a movie, you are the director who decides how it all unfolds. You can't just sit around and wait for things to happen because that would be a really boring movie. Instead, you have to make things happen. How do you do that? Be busy, be interested, be engaged, be curious. Choose how you fill your time. Whatever you do, don't be bored. Don't kill time. Use it. Spend it. And spend it even more carefully than you spend money. After all, you can always earn more money. Time is more precious. And as you spend your time, as you go about your figuring and wondering and wandering, allow yourself to be open to new things. Remember, from this point on, everything will be new. For many of you, Solberry School has been a comfortable, familiar, secure place. Wherever you go from here will be different. It may feel easier at times to lean back rather than lean in. Don't do it. Get out there and make your own fun. I have shared with you today some life lessons, yet the good news is that Solbury School has already taught you in many important lessons. You have learned a lot here, and more than just the timeline of World War II or why Holden Caulfield is an anti-hero. By the time you reach this moment, we always hope that you learn how to be successful students, yet more than that, we hope that you learn how to be successful people, and you undoubtedly are. You have become confident leaders and astute critical thinkers. You have become curious and compassionate, motivated and resilient. You have learned how to navigate the world. And along the way, I want you to know that you have wowed us on the stage, on the basketball court, in your paintings, in rock band, in your writing, on the sports fields, in the ideas you have shared, the clubs you have led, and the awards you have won. And as you leave Solberry School, I want you to know that we will always remember you. You have wormed your way into the history of the school and into our hearts. And you have left your invisible fingerprints all over this place. You have left your mark here, and now it's time to leave your mark somewhere else. It's always a little bittersweet when a senior class moves on, but this is exactly what's supposed to happen. We, your families and your teachers, show you how to use your wings and then collectively hold our breaths with pride and hope and watch you fly away. All year, you have been standing with one foot in the past and one foot in the future, and now it's time to cross the line into a new hemisphere. And as you go, remember to be open to the life lessons, the gems of wisdom that you receive along the way. Listen for the signal amidst all the noise. You never know where the important stuff will come from, so be open to it all. My favorite life lessons have come from family, teachers, friends. They even came from a small, hand-embroidered sign that still sits in my kitchen. Of course, if my experience is any indication, it's likely that you will forget all the advice you received today, but try to remember a few things. Remember that we are proud of you. Remember that we believe in you. Remember that we can't wait to see what you will do next. And even if you forget everything else, as you leave here, remember to be smart, be safe, make good choices, and just be okay. Or, in other words, chew carefully. Class of 2016, I believe we have arrived at that moment. Rick Tony, Director of Studies, will read the recipients. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and administration, I am thrilled to award these diplomas to the class of 2016. Justin Tauber Berger. <laughs> Emma Elizabeth Black. <laughs> Afra Ya Boating. 
Ariel Joy Bono. <laughs> Maya Amari Brewington. Neilan Patrick Edgar. Jonathan Thomas Fleming. Dylan Michael Foley. Sophia Christina Giangrasso. Taylor Pulsinelli Goldberg. Chloe Boucher Goolsby. Marta Kaya Hoiberg. Neil Robert Hafner. Leah Ripley Hunt. Nicholas Julian Lavery. Carlos Antonio Lewis Miller. Shuang Liang. Chinfang Lin. Haloon Yulu. John Ross Matty. Anna Victoria Markov. Charlotte Rosemary Martin. Devin Scott Matchett. Julia Elizabeth McDonald. Trevor Royce McLaughlin. Kyle Addison Miller. Masejo Manchusi. Alexandra Karen Morrow. Aviva Bella Hoffman Nachman. Cornelia Antoinette Pierce. Noah Benjamin Sadoff. Daniel James Sheriff. Emma Rose Scheiman. Adeline Grant Skovronik. Jake Hunter Steinberg. Curtis Isamel Thompson, Jr. Catherine Knowles Voynel. Wenrei Wong. Xiao Yi Wang. Benjamin Leo Weil. Ashley Jordan Weintraub. Carol Lee Wright. Alex Kevin Ye. Yang Ju Yun. Karen Jung. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in acknowledging the 88th graduating class of Solbury School? graduates, as you look ahead to the next journey and all the ones that follow, I would ask that you reflect on a thought Winston Churchill shared more than a half century ago. Staring into a very uncertain future, Churchill said, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. 
As you leave Solbury School, go forward with zest and ambition and purpose and courage, and don't forget to have some fun and chew always. <laughs> this concludes our graduation ceremony. Thank you.